All right, so now we're looking at geometric sequences. Okay, so we're looking at the sequence k minus 1, 2k, 3k plus 1. And we're asked to solve for k and find the next two numbers of the sequence. Okay, now interestingly enough, it is possible to solve this as an arithmetic sequence. That's just an aside. If you have free time, feel free to figure out what numbers that would be. You can solve it just like other arithmetic sequences. But we're wanting to find out what the answers would be if it's a geometric sequence. So if we're multiplying or dividing by something to get the next term. Okay, so to do this, we want to divide the third term by the second term that gives us this here and the second term by the first term that gives us this. We know we can do that because the ratio between term 1 and term 2 is the same as the ratio between term 2 and term 3. So if we, are to, if we divide that third term, 3k plus 1, divided by 2k, and that second term, 2k plus 1, by the first, k minus 1, both of those give us our ratio of difference between those problems. Okay? Now, because those are both equal to r, and they're for the same problem, they mean the same thing. If we're to solve those, if we had an answer to plug back in, they would come out to be equal to the same thing. So we can set those equal to each other. So we can say 3k plus 1 divided by 2k equals 2k divided by k minus 1. Now, we need to simplify this. Now, I combine two steps into one, just for simplicity. So two, I multiplied both sides by both 2k and k minus 1, which those terms do cancel with the respective denominator of each side. Okay, so in essence, what, what we're really saying is k minus 1 times 3k plus 1 equals 2k times 2k. Okay, now, that's exactly what I wrote in this next step. Okay, so now to solve this problem, we're going to need to um, foil or basically unfactor our problem. We're going to need to distribute, okay? And I don't know if you've learned the FOIL rule, but you always want to do first, outside, inside, last. So first terms, outside terms, inside terms, last terms, okay? I'm going to finish that arrow just because I can. Now, when you FOIL that problem, and we know that 2k times 2k is just going to be 4k squared, we're going to get 3k squared plus k minus 3k minus 1. Now we need to simplify this problem and solve for k, because we're trying to find out what k is and what the next two terms in the sequence are. Now to solve a quadratic equation, we need it set equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to take 4k squared away from this side and put it over here, because that leaves nothing on this side, and that's exactly what we want. 3k squared minus 4k squared, and um, I did combine like terms in this step from the previous step, so minus 2k minus 1 we're going to get negative k squared minus 2k minus 1 equals 0. Now, personally, when I'm solving quadratic equations, if I get to this step and I'm going to have to pull out a negative 1 and everything is negative, or if it's going to be slightly more difficult to factor because the first term is negative, I choose to go ahead and multiply both or divide both sides by negative 1. Okay? That's a perfectly legitimate thing to do in math. 
It just so happens that this side stays the same because zero divided by anything is still zero. Okay, so that changes it to a much more friendly looking k squared plus 2k plus 1, which we can then factor because it's set equal to zero. And it comes out to be k plus 1 times k plus 1, or k plus 1 squared. Okay? For this problem, I prefer to write it this way. Because these are the same, there is only one solution for this quadratic equation, which is k equals negative 1. So k equals negative 1. So now we're going to go back and plug it into our, um, our sequence from the beginning. So the first term in the sequence was k minus 1, so negative 1 minus 1. The second term was 2 times k, so 2 times negative 1. And the third term was 3k plus 1, so 3 times negative 1 plus 1. But when we start solving those, we see an interesting pattern. All three of those equal negative 2. So interestingly enough, if we were to go back and solve for the ratio, okay, the ratio is going to come out to tell you that they do not change. Okay, All of the terms in this sequence are negative 2. So the next two terms, if we were to write out all of the terms in this sequence, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, they're all going to be negative 2.